Okay, well, as always, the, uh, the judging process is never straightforward. Um, it always absolutely blows me away to see what people have managed to achieve in a couple of days. I've spent a significant amount of uh, my career working in the uh, upstream software business, and I've spent uh, many times in meetings having people explain to me why a particular piece of functionality was the most important thing that they didn't do, or why it needs to be at least three years and many millions of dollars to implement a functionality. And then I come here and I see people doing the most outstanding and creative things in 72 hours. Um, and I'm always inspired to think that actually we should just take all the people from a hackathon, start up a company, and we could absolutely change the world. Because if this is what we can do in three days, imagine what you could do in a couple of weeks. So following the uh, following the judging, the judging, there are uh, there are a few um, teams that we want to uh, recognise for uh, uh, particular uh, contributions and for the work that they did. And what I'm going to do is the uh, uh, my five judges on the uh, judging panel are each going to present one of the, the awards, uh, and I'm going to invite them to come up, just briefly introduce themselves, uh, and uh, explain a bit about the award. Uh, why we liked it, and then announced who's going. Oh, what the prize is, uh, uh, and then what we liked about the team, and then we'll announce who the team is. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, uh, Matthias, uh, who's going to give the award for originality. Thank you, David. Thank you all. So, my name is Matthias Hartung. I've uh, been 30 years in the industry and never been bored. So, uh, my current role is uh, president of the digital transformation with Target. Before I had about 29 years with Shell. And I'm, I'm really excited to see all of, uh, of the ideas here. So let us let me share, like Dave just said, it was very difficult for us in the end to find uh, an award and single out one team and uh, and what criteria do you use, etc. So you all really deserve a round of applause. Thank you. So with that legal waiver done, the Originality Award uh, for an outstanding uh, contribution here goes to RG Blend. Please come forward. This is, wait, 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 wait. This is the original team. And this is the originality award. Why did you get this award? I think we really like the fact that uh, you took three pictures running through RGB and showed us an application that can be used in 4D seismic, in seeps analysis and otherwise. So you really took a technology and put it in context and have a real clear, clear use case with it. Thank you very much. And what we give to you are microcontrollers. So this really will help you to get into the hardware world, uh, get more sensors out there, get more sensors out there, and do more of your originality. Thank you. If we can get a photo of the team. Okay, uh, a second award uh, is going to be presented by uh, Andreas, and this is the People's Influence Choice Award. 
very important award. Um, so I'm essentially speaking for all of you, I guess. Um, my name is Andreas B. I work with uh, Wintershall. I'm a geologist by background. And um, with the last bit of my introduction, I probably already give away um, where this, this prize is going to. For many, many years, um, I have done volume and risk analysis of exploration projects. And so therefore, um, what this group that I'm now, almost now, um, are calling up to the stage has achieved has quite impressed me. And, and I know that it's very, very difficult to, to work on that subject because it's uncertainty is something that most of, uh, or I guess all humans struggle with um, to firstly accept and secondly uh, to visualize. And yeah, I, I honestly, um, I have a lot, a lot of um, sympathy for, for your uh, work. And uh, yeah, now I guess all of you know who's, who's coming to stage now. It's the Volume Uncertainty VIS team. And um, yeah, everybody in this room thought um, you have done a great job. Come close. Your your applause. Now the um, the prizes are inventors kits for microbit. Um, that's IoT boxes with what else? Microcontrollers and, and stuff. <laughs> you get manuals. Yeah, very good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, we now move on to the uh, the functionality award, and I'd like to ask uh, Monica, Monica to come up and award that. Okay, so first of all, this is my first hackathon ever, and I have to say I've been in the upstream software business for the last five years, um, and I'm so impressed with what you guys have been able to do over the weekend. Um, I'm actually going to go back and just start yelling at my developers immediately that they're not doing enough, <laughs> and they're not doing it fast enough. Um, I'm Monica Beach. I work for a company called Icon Science. You've probably heard of a software maybe that we make called RockDoc. Um, lately, I've become a global portfolio manager for content, so that's kind of how I fit in. And if any of you are going to EAGE, come by and see me. Um, anyway, just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the functionality award. Uh, you know, functionality is really, really important for uh, end users and everybody involved. If, if it's not helpful, to, you know, if it doesn't make an impact, uh, what's the point, really? Uh, one of the ones that really stood out to us this, this, uh, today um, is the ability to really bring the field to life, right? Maybe even on our floor. So um, uh, to, uh, to you know, kind of speed this up, I will say that uh, we've selected the smart OGs um, in terms of their outstanding effort and functionality. Because seeing an outcrop literally sitting on a hardwood floor uh, in the middle of your lab is pretty remarkable. Um, However, I hope you don't kill good field trips because we still need to go out to the field. Uh, but it's certainly helpful. I can tell you as a geologist, a lot of times, you know, having, trying to remember what did that outcrop look like and why did I write these notes and why did I draw what I drew? Being able to pop something up on your table and revisit it, you know, kind of on demand is uh, pretty sexy, to be honest. So uh, congratulations if you guys want to come up. Uh, Noise canceling headphones. Uh, I don't know if you traveled here. You flew uh, flew to get to uh, Copenhagen today, but maybe you can use them on your flight uh, on the way back. Great job, guys! Really impressive work. Okay. Can we get the outcrop in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, um, time to move on to the Teamwork Award. So Eric, if you could come up and present that one. Yes, the, the Teamwork Award is, of course, very much in the spirit of uh, the hackathons about coming together, uh, different peoples with different backgrounds, coders, domain experts, and so on. And so we'd like to award the award for teamwork to the RGB Explorers. And, and the award is very teamwork friendly. It's an echo spot, video enabled, so you can continue your uh, communication when you get back home. Also, Okay, we have one last uh, prize to give. Now, it's, it's fair to say that as a general rule in hackathons, there's no sense of people winning or doing better, but in, in this one, there was one particular team that, uh, that the judges all loved, that the audience all loved, and I'm going to invite uh, Arno to come up and uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the Best in Show Award. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Arno Road. I work for Total. I'm in charge of uh, the uh, software's uh, development within um, or for the ENP business. So I'm happy to be here again with uh, you guys. Uh, uh, we, we did this uh, together last year in Paris. This, this was really great and this one's obviously great, great as well. So um, yeah, best in show actually uh, stood out for the you guys, for, for the, from the people's uh, choice. It stood out as well for uh, from the jury. So uh, I'd like to invite the embedders to come to the stage. <laughs> So it's pretty neat 360 degree cams. Uh, they're pretty cool, I think. So uh, oh, that one's for me. Guys. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, congratulations, guys. Yeah. So that that concludes the uh, the, the the award ceremony. Uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Matt in a moment to uh, wrap up proceedings, and then the uh, the, the serious beer drinking can commence. But before I do that, I just want to say a brief word about the work that it takes to organize one of these hackathons. It makes me smile when Matt, Matt says that he's, he's surprised that I give up spending time staring at SAP and spreadsheets to spend a weekend coming and hacking away with computers. Um, for, those, for those of you who have part of their life doing that, um, it's, it's not a hard thing to say yes to. Um, my biggest contribution really is um, persuading my boss a few times a year that he should write a check and that these things are a good idea. The strange truth part of the story, though, is that I only discovered recently is that for the first few years that we were sponsoring these hackathons, my boss did it because I was very passionate and enthusiastic about it. And in the last six months, he's realized quite what a force these hackathons have become in terms of uh, their presence in the industry, the way that they're inspiring people, the more organizations that are getting involved. You know, I remember the first one I went to was in Denver, and there were 20 two people there and it was a few people that have been persuaded to come a couple of days early for SEG and just out of curiosity how many people here are not going to the EAG conference next week see that's a that's a bit of a change from where it was a couple of years ago and what you realize is that people are showing up because they want to come to the hackathon not because it's an excuse to be in Copenhagen for the weekend before and, and somehow manage to expense it. So I think these events are absolutely inspiring and amazing. But I want everybody to put their hands together. The guys from Agile, 
uh, Matt, Evan, Diego, they work super hard to organize these events. It, there's an unimaginable amount of work that goes on in the background. So guys, thank you so much. And on that happy and cheerful note, I'm going to hand over to Matt to wrap things up. Thanks for making my day. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, so good. I'm going to have goosebumps for a week. Uh, like, <laughs> Friday feels like, uh, I don't know, yeah, Friday feels like uh, a few weeks ago. But um, those of you who showed up, you know, not knowing what to expect or with no coding skills, um, you know, and, and feeling a bit apprehensive, like try and just try and, if you can, think back and, and remember that feeling and just sort of where you are now and uh, what you've accomplished. I think it's, it's just really amazing. And I love, like, I feel privileged to be part of the beginning of your journey. You know, I, like, I love coding. It's one of my favorite things to do. I don't play video games or anything like that, but it feels like a, like a game almost. It's so it's so satisfying to you know get your test passing or write an awesome function or a cool algorithm, um, uh, you know. So please uh, try like carry on if, if you can if you can find something to to keep you going through the sort of pain of learning. Uh, I promise it will pay off even if you're you still feel like it's a you know a, a struggle and it is hard. But um, yeah, so be brave and continue and uh, please you know. Hopefully, we'll see you again at another event. Um, I'll tell you about some more events that you can come to uh, in a second. But before I forget, I do want to thank very, very much the people from Rainmaking Loft, uh, Nina at the back there, Neva, and I'm afraid I don't know your name because uh, you, you just came in this afternoon. But <laughs> uh, thank you all very much for supporting us. You've made my life much, much easier, and uh, you've done an awesome job uh, serving uh, these people's needs. So, uh, you know, thank you. Let's have a round of applause. Yeah, so, you know, if you're doing cool stuff in Copenhagen, this is a really great place to do it, you know, FYI. Um, uh, Christopher and the Vintersal, um sort of media team and VJ at the back there, um, thanks for being, you know, for capturing our event. I think we'll all be able to look back at some of these pictures and the video and have some really great memories. So thanks very much for your contributions as well. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention a few events that are coming up. If you've got kind of the the, the bug and you happen to live in these places or wanna, want want uh, to travel somewhere, we're doing uh, an event in Norway attached to a force meeting. It's happening in September. Um, you can go to the force website, find out about it. Uh, we're so we're organising that event uh, with force. Peter Foreman, who was here earlier, is the sort of convener of the symposium, the one day symposium that will follow that. Um, we're going to be we're going to do something at SEG, but I think we're going to do something different and maybe weird. Uh, we're already doing something weird at SEG, but I'm going to do something else that's also weird. Um, so please keep an eye on the blog agilescientific.com for that uh, because that's that's where we'll announce it. And last thing, we're doing some events, uh, some training, and some hackathons in the UK. The hackathons I wanted to call out particularly they're in November. There's one in London. Uh, right before the Petex show, it's at Olympia in a really awesome room. Actually, a bit like this one with really great pillars inside it. Um, and we're doing one in Aberdeen, actually, the week before that, so towards the end of November. Um, if, if you haven't been in the UK or you want to come to those, it would be awesome to see you there. Um, how are we doing? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. We're on time. You guys are awesome. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a you know epic getting out of here. Please like remember your belongings. Like look for your stuff. Um, you know, of course, we'll do our best to connect you with anything that, that um, you can't find today. But I mean, we're going to be sweeping through here uh, for the next couple of hours. But, like, I'd like you guys, if you can, to um, you know be on your way if possible before seven. That way, we can all kind of get out of here and get cleaned up in decent time. Um, 
Can I just say quickly? Please, yeah. If you're one of the six or seven people who borrowed one of the Dell workstations, that was just a loan for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a permanent gift, so I came here with 19. Why don't leave with 19? I have to pay for it myself. So. It's only it was 15. Was it 19? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, 15 plus the four ARVR system. Plus the ARVR system, right. Yeah, you will be conspicuous if you leave with the AR headset. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're easy to forget about these technologies, but um, yeah, okay. So um, yeah, please, that, that's important that, that uh, David doesn't lose any gear. So please help us with that. If you are going to be AGE, we're going to be in the exhibition at a thing called Code Show. Please come check it out. Uh, it's going to be uh, weird and crazy and awesome, I hope. Uh, you can help make it awesome by, by uh, visiting. And that's all I'm going to say. See you next time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>